Okay, so you guys will know how to mix vocals. I'm going to show you how to do that in GarageBand. Let's have a look. Okay, now, firstly, here's my very horribly crude diagram. Okay, this shows you what I'm talking about in terms of equalization. Right, I like to have everything to have its own individual place in this whole mix. So the brain should be able to hear all of these instruments all at the same time and be able to pick them out in their own little pockets of sound. Problem is, when you get vocals, vocals tend to take up not just this little space here, but actually have a huge, great big spread. So what we're going to look at doing is actually giving vocals their own equalization so that actually they've got their own little pocket of sound which you can hear really clearly whilst hearing everything else all at the same time. Okay, right, let's have a little look. So here is my project we're doing at the moment. This is Home, which you might have heard already on my YouTube channel. Okay, so what I've done is I've made a couple of tracks. I've got a basic track and I've got what I'm actually using in the real project here. So basic and real. Now, with the basic track, I'm going to show you what it sounds like just with the rest of the song and you can hear it for yourself. This has got no effects, no EQ, it's just plain bog standard recorded straight into GarageBand. Here we go. And soloed. Okay, still doing that. There you go, that's by itself now. Thank you for the greatest life, and thank you for being mine. I wouldn't have changed a single thing. Okay, so yeah, although it sounds great, you know, it's not really going to stand out much in a mix, as you just heard. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to mute that track. All right, and now we're going to start looking at the ones that I actually use. Okay, so let's have a look. Right, so I'm going to go on to my first melody now. You'll notice how I split my tracks up into two tracks. Now, most people just record one track like that, um, straight into the microphone, just one track, and it's panned straight in the centre. I like to do it this way, and let me show you why. Another crude diagram. Okay, this is, imagine that's a pan, okay, pan wheel, which looks like one of those there. Yep. Right. I like to have each instrument have their own little place within the actual... Um, whole pan wheel okay so this is the far distance and that's right in the center now things that you want to stand out you want them in the center so I want my drums my bass that's the main backing of the track what stands right out and the brain should concentrate on all that there however all the rest of it should be supplementary to it so things like the synths and the orchestra I don't want it to be right in the middle of the mix I want it to be somewhere towards the back but notice how everything has got its own little space and that's what makes a mix have um, everything's about to heard at the same time, okay? So, let's see what I'm actually using. I'm using various different things, uh, okay, including a noise gate. Noise gate's essential. That gets rid of all the little hisses. If you think I've got, I don't know how many tracks here, tons and tons and tons of tracks. If each single track had a little bit of hiss on it, that would multiply and you'd have a ridiculous amount of um, sounds and horrible hisses. So I put a noise gate on. I've got that one on around about minus 33 decibels, and that's great, okay? Compressor, yep, as you can see, I'm just going to show you the settings on that one now. All this is doing is keeping the track nice and tight. It's squeezing it all together, but not too much. It's not sucking the life out of it, okay? So we've got threshold, minus 10, ratio 5.0 to 1, attack 5 milliseconds, and gain is on 4.5 decibels. All right, so save one as the um, compressor. Then we've got the reverb. Now, in studios, um, they tend to use plate reverb. So what I've done is I've made a plate reverb setting. Let's see if I can find that now. There we go. So if I literally go into here, okay, and I switch from manual, I'll just go to my plate reverb. There it is. Okay, continue. There you go. And stick with the defaults on that. That's absolutely fine. Just go straight into plate, and it will set it up for you, okay? Okay, so that's the reverb done. Don't use the reverb, um, the master reverb too much. Just use the um, reverb on there, which is under AU Matrix Reverb. Now, a high pass filter, as I said earlier, what this does with the vocals, they tend to, I want them here, but they tend to take up a whole load of sound. What I'm going to do, a high pass filter cuts the sound off from there onwards so everything below here all these bass frequencies it gets rid of them for me but it keeps the high sounds which is what i want so let's have a look see what's on that one high pass filter au high pass it's called i've got this little dot here wait for it to zoom in 
There you go, frequency 2.56 hertz minus 5.98. Now you can use this filter for whatever you want, okay? Um, I like to have it set as this, all instruments, high pass filter. I give the same high pass filter to every instrument and the reason it is simple. If looking back at this, I don't want any of these instruments to be in the bass section. I want the bass to be, this bass section here, to be just the drums and the bass. I don't want my acoustics and my electrics and my vocals all nick in their frequencies. They should all have their own individual frequencies. So use the high pass filter, those settings on every single track that is not the bass and the drums. Okay, next one, parametric equalizer. Okay, again, let's double click on that one for you. Um, what this is doing here, as you can see, here's the highs and here's the lows. That's where all the bass and the drums is kicking in. Now I just want to really emphasize the little high bits to make those vocals stand out really far in the mix. So I've got that on. Um, 14990 hertz and 3.18 decibels and a Q of 1. Now you might be thinking, what is he on about? Don't worry about it so much. All it's saying is it's got a quite high frequency. You don't have to be exact. See, look, if I move it around slightly, it moves. Um, but get it to as close as you can. All right. Now, if you want to move the Q around, all you do is this yellow line here. Just drag it around and that'll move the Q. Okay. That's all you do. Move it up and down and around. Okay. That's the parametric equaliser. And I have another parametric equaliser set up. This one is emphasising the high mids. Do you think this section here, that's all your mids, I want it to be emphasising the high bits and the mids, so it'll pierce through towards the top. Okay, and uh, that's on. A Q of 1 again, gain 1.68 and frequency of 3, 2, 1, 3 hertz. Now what that's doing, like I said, it just means that you hear the highs and the mids, but you don't have all the bass. My cat's joining in. Hello, Holly. Yeah, so that's pretty much what we're using. Now, I tend to use also a clear vocals. What this is doing is just giving a little bit more, um, taking a bit more low mids out, because I really don't want it to blend in with the bass and the drums. I want them to have their own frequencies. Get rid of some of the low mid, and put a little bit more on the high end if, you, if it's to your taste, and you want it a little bit higher pitched. I like it like that, because it cuts through beautifully. Okay, what I've done also, add a little tiny bit of echo, just it's quite atmospheric and it's quite an emotional song, so bit of echo and a little bit more reverb. And this is the difference. Ready? Sounds a lot nicer, I think. So, I mean, already, that's why I turn the speakers down, because having the EQ up means you'll hear the uh, instruments far, far clearer, which means you don't have to turn them up so much. Because half the time, you end up with problems getting distorted down here. If you're turning the EQ properly, you shouldn't need to keep turning vocals up. All you're doing is letting them be heard throughout the mix, rather than turning the volume up. Turning the volume up doesn't always solve everything to do with vocals. It's all about your EQ. Okay, so let me know if that helped you, and look for the rest of my videos as well. Don't forget to check out Home and the rest of my songs on my YouTube channel. Please rate and subscribe if you want to, and um, see you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.